Now, like many of you, I've always wondered if and when Steve Austin would ever come back and work a pay-per-view event ever again for the WWE. And for years, I've entertained the thought of whether or not Austin has truly wrestled his last match for WWE going all the way back to 2003, or if he's got one more run in him, if he has any desire or any hope to have one more match, most probably at a WrestleMania. And I look back at the career of Stone Cold Steve Austin, we're talking about one of the biggest superstars and most well-known names still to this day, not only in the history of that company, but in any wrestling company on the face of the planet. This is one of those rare guys that truly transcended and became a household name. This was a guy who was a critical character at a key point in the history of the old WWF and WWE. You know, when you think of the Attitude Era, you think about The Rock, but ultimately your thoughts always come first to Stone Cold Steve Austin. While there was a period of time to me where The Rock was better and more popular, at the end of the day, the Attitude Era, when you think about the Attitude Era, it is encapsulated in Stone Cold Steve Austin. It truly is. You know, I might argue Vince McMahon, but Austin is that guy. It was his era. And I think when we look at what happened with Stone Cold going back to 2002, 2003, you're talking about the walkout, the pick up his ball and go home in 2002, the fact that he wrestled his last match against The Rock all the way back at WrestleMania 19. We know the story by now about how he was in bad shape the night before WrestleMania, and that's why ultimately the match didn't main event like it apparently was supposed to, because they were concerned about what type of match Austin could deliver. And I've always wondered, you know, with how things ended up going at the end of Austin's career, with how he had that match at WrestleMania 19, I've always felt that Austin, deep down inside, didn't want to go out that way. I've always felt that Austin has... Deep down, even if he hasn't always wanted to admit it to himself, he's always wanted one more run or at least one more big-time marquee WrestleMania match. And frankly, nobody up to and even including Stone Cold Steve Austin is ever going to convince me of anything other than that. To me, this guy wants one more big spotlight match at WrestleMania. And if he wants it, he frankly deserves it. I mean, and there's a lot of appeal there, in my opinion. You're talking about a guy that hasn't wrestled in over 12 years now. So while you could sit there and go on the part-timer crap and the old fogey crap, coming back and taking the spotlight from somebody else, this isn't just anybody. This is Austin. And this is a guy that hasn't wrestled in the WWE for over a decade. I don't give a damn what anybody says that has a tremendous amount of appeal and interest to me and many others just because of the fact it would be like that last proper send-off, that really proper send-off that, frankly, Austin never got as an active in-ring competitor. It was like WrestleMania 19 against The Rock. He loses, and then that's it, and then you hear from him here or there throughout the years. So I can understand why, as people were watching the Stone Cold podcast on WWE Network Monday night, and there he is interviewing Paul Heyman, and you get to the point where Austin's talking about Brock Lesnar and saying that in a fight he would kick his ass, and you get the back and forth between him and Heyman. Why that got a lot of people's dicks hard and their titties bulging? Because they're thinking about the thought of Stone Cold Steve Austin versus Brock Lesnar at WrestleMania 32 and all that encapsulates. A huge money match on the surface, surely, featuring the most compelling character you would argue in today's WWE and Brock Lesnar, most certainly your best special attraction, going against one of the truly great attractions in the history of the business, coming back after being gone for over 12 years as an in-ring competitor. And you're looking at WrestleMania 32, and you know Vince McMahon has his mindset on one thing and one thing only. He wants to set an indoor attendance record. It's a record he once had, and he desperately, desperately wants it again. And with them having WrestleMania 32 in Dallas at Cowboys Stadium, AT&T Stadium, whatever you want to call it, that shrine to Jerry Jones' ego, it's basically all hands on deck for the WWE come WrestleMania 32, as it should be. I know a lot of people will say, 
you know, well, you got to build the future. You got to do this. You got to do that. You know, it would be one of these situations where one time, one time only, I'd be perfectly okay with them not so much focusing on the future or using that WrestleMania platform to launch themselves going forward. Because this is about a statement and the company making a statement and trying to establish themselves as a legitimate force for years to come. And I understand the pressure and the circumstances that the WWE would face heading into that monster show next year with WrestleMania 32. I mean, let's be perfectly honest. If you're trying to set an indoor attendance record, and I mean no disrespect to anybody involved with the current company today, but are you going to rely upon people like, you know, John Cena, Randy Orton, Roman Reigns, Dean Ambrose, Seth Rollins, maybe a return Daniel Bryan to help you sell out that event and set that indoor attendance record? Or are you going to rely upon people like Triple H and The Rock and Stone Cold Steve Austin and The Undertaker and Sting and Brock Lesnar? Not to say that with those other guys, the guys that are currently active on a full-time basis, you couldn't potentially sell out the venue and you couldn't make a strong statement there. But it's a much easier and safer bet to believe that if you go with Triple H and The Rock on the card facing off against each other, Sting versus Taker on the card, and Austin versus Brock Lesnar on the card, not to mention if they did something like Stephanie McMahon versus Ronda Rousey, you're talking about not only an event where they set a world indoor attendance record, but you're talking about potentially a big boon to exposure and subscribers to the WWE Network heading into that event. It's easy to understand it. And I understand that as fans, a lot of times we look at those fantasy matchups and frankly, Austin versus Lesnar is kind of in a way a fantasy matchup going back to 2002 when Austin was supposed to do the honors for Brock Lesnar in the King of the Ring qualifying match. And it was part of the whole impetus for Austin wanting to pick up his ball and go home in 2002. Not to say I don't fully understand what Austin was thinking at the time because he's right and everything he's ever said about that is right. Here you've got the next big thing, Brock Lesnar, against the guy who has been the thing for the past several years, and you're going to give it away for free on Raw as a King of the Ring qualifying match with no buildup? That's something that's your main event of pay-per-view. Not only main event of pay-per-view, but main event of big four critical key important pay-per-view like a SummerSlam or a WrestleMania. So I understand with all the talk over the years about maybe Stone Cold coming back to face off with CM Punk now that Punk is gone and probably gone for a long time, you know that's probably not going to happen. A lot of you want to see Austin have one more run. You want to see a fantasy matchup for him. And the closest thing you have in a lot of ways for Austin to a fantasy matchup is going to be Brock Lesnar. I understand why so many people are excited at the thought of this, why so many people are probably splooging all over their little laptop, tablet, and computer screens right now just thinking about it. But when it comes to Stone Cold Steve Austin versus Brock Lesnar at WrestleMania 32, I say no thanks. I'm not down with it. I'm just not interested in it. I really, truly am not. And there are several reasons for this. First, I look at it from the Stone Cold Steve Austin standpoint. I'm not sure how the dynamics of this would work if you brought in an Austin to feud with a Lesnar. And those dynamics are very important because to me, and this is just my opinion based off of certain things that I believe that I kind of feel are true, there are three things above all else that are most important to Austin when it comes to any potential comeback to the WWE. No matter what he says or anybody else tries to tell you, Austin's wanted to come back for years. But the money's got to be right. The situation for his character has got to be right, and the final result has to be right in that particular order. Money, situation, finish. Those are the three things that Stone Cold Steve Austin cares about. And that's my opinion. And based off of what we've heard him say over the years and the way he's kind of addressed it, it leads you to believe that those are the three most important things in that particular order. Talking about, you know, th things have to line up. Well, what has to line up? The money, the situation, and the finish. You know, how much is he going to get paid? The situation of where he would be featured, where he would be booked, and who he would be booked against, and how that would all play out. And then ultimately, what would be the result of it? Because for all the people that like to talk about the guys like the Hogans of the Worlds, being the great politickers, the Halls and the Nashes, the Triple H's, the Shawn Michaels, for some reason so often Stone Cold Steve Austin is left out 
of that conversation of being one of the great politicians in the history of professional wrestling, especially the WWE. You leaving him out of the conversation is foolish. To be a top guy in the WWE for any extended length of time, you have to be some type of politician. You can go about it in different ways, but Austin certainly fits into that category. And when it comes to him versus Brock Lesnar, the money would probably be right, but I'm not sure if the situation and the finish would be right for Stone Cold Steve Austin. Because Austin, to me, has always wanted to go in as the babyface and be the Austin, and that's it, and that's that. That's always what he's been best at, being what Austin does best. Um, and that's why you could have argued that him versus CM Punk organically worked on so many different levels because of the contrast of personalities and characters and who and what they represented. And you could flip CM Punk heel for it, allow Austin to be the fan favorite, and everybody's freaking happy and it's a license to print money. We can't really do that with Brock Lesnar because now you've got a strong contingent of people that like Brock Lesnar. That would be cheering for Brock Lesnar to win. You'd be looking at potentially a very split audience, and I'm not sure that's something that Austin is necessarily comfortable with working in as an environment at this point in time, especially since it would be you know, 13 years after his last WrestleMania match, he's having this one last big send-off, and then it comes to the finish. Austin's going to want to go over as much as he possibly can, unless it just made absolutely perfect sense for him not to go over, especially from a monetary standpoint. And if you have him facing off against somebody like a Brock Lesnar, let's be honest here. If Stone Cold went over a Brock Lesnar, it would be a joke and an abortion of a booking decision. The other problem is it would be incredibly predictable because most people wouldn't think that Austin would really have an realistic chance of beating a Brock Lesnar. Therefore, what's the purpose of having the match if you already know the outcome heading into it? So how much drawing power is really there? You know, just because this was something that they should have done 12, 13, 14 years ago doesn't necessarily mean that it's something that they should do now. And I get the whole concept of all hands on deck again. I'm on board with that. It's the same damn thing I would do. If I'm going to take my chances, I'm going to take my chances with the people that I know that can deliver. And it's that simple from a business standpoint, and frankly, from a fan standpoint, too, because there could be, you know, that nostalgia can really help carry the day, at least in the short term, in terms of what it does long term. Yeah. You know, but frankly, the last few WrestleMania is what has really been done in the long term. Nothing that's been all that particularly good of any real consequence. But when you look at this and you sit there and say, okay, You've got Austin. You've got Lesnar. Okay, if you've got both of them involved, why not divide your resources and utilize them for two big money matches instead of one slightly bigger money match? You've already got Triple H versus The Rock. So those are two legends tied up into themselves. Let's say you do Sting versus The Undertaker. You've got two legends tied up into themselves. Now you get Stone Cold Steve Austin and Brock Lesnar. It's another situation of instead of utilizing your two legends maybe in a more efficient and effective manner by splitting them off and having them each work a marquee program, therefore increasing the overall impact of their presence on the card, it, therefore increasing the significance of the show, you're tying all your resources up into that one basket. And I just don't think it makes a lot of sense. I really, truly don't. You know, when you look at a guy like Brock Lesnar at this point in time, I also have a problem with him working with Stone Cold Steve Austin because part of the whole reason for him going over Taker at WrestleMania 30 was so that way you would continue to get investment on the street. A return on that investment, I should say, on the street. It was a way to relaunch Brock Lesnar. It was a way to right some egregiously previous wrongs when it came to Brock Lesnar and his character. So sitting there and having him feud with somebody like a Stone Cold Steve Austin heading into WrestleMania 32 is not really giving you any type of real significant return on the investment. It's not. At least when you could say you're devoting Roman Reigns to Brock Lesnar at WrestleMania 31, that can make sense in a lot of different ways. You know, you bring in a Brock Lesnar back and maybe you're sending him at Seth Rollins for the summer. Again, that makes a lot of sense because you're trying to continue the investment that you put in for over two decades into the Undertaker character, especially at WrestleMania, and now you're continuing that investment and the return on said investment by having Brock Lesnar work with these different guys. You have all at least a few people that you could put in there that could have a WrestleMania match with somebody like a Brock Lesnar. 
You don't have a ton of names, but you have enough. You could sit there and always go back maybe to the Roman reigns well. You did it once. It most certainly wasn't a disaster. Why not go back there again? You could, in theory, do somebody like Randy Orton. Well, some of you might say, what the fuck does Randy Orton deserve that spot for? This is a guy that's been around a long time, could still be there for several years to come. Here's a guy that you would think could be viewed at least somewhat as a credible, legitimate threat to a guy like Brock Lesnar, and there's some money to be made with that type of match. Maybe you could sit there and rebuild up a Bray Wyatt, as crazy as that sounds. Maybe you really get on board with Ryback, or maybe you really get on board with building up Sheamus. You know, maybe you really get on board and you build up a Kevin Owens. To me, I think you get a lot more on so many different levels from having a Brock Lesnar work with one of those guys as opposed to a Stone Cold Steve Austin. You know, like I said, I'm, I'm for the involvement of the part-timers at WrestleMania 32 for that one time on a big scale because I understand it and I get it. And just for the context of what it needs to be, it, it's fine with me. But I just, again, don't think it's the best utilization for Austin. And frankly, I don't know at this point in time if there really is a great utilization for Austin at WrestleMania 32. Again, I believe it's all hands on deck. And personally, this is just my opinion from the outside looking in. If you're anybody that's anybody when it comes to professional wrestling, if you didn't find a way to get yourself potentially on this WrestleMania 32 card, then shame on you. If you didn't want to do it, then what the fuck is wrong with you? If you are anybody that is anybody, you would think of any show in the history of WWE or any WrestleMania that you would ever want to be involved in, that WrestleMania 32 would be that one. Even if you took a little bit less money than you would normally want to take in order to be a part of that event, sometimes that payoff longer term is more profitable to you than just that short-term seven-figure payout that you potentially get from working that match on that show. So, you know, you've got people like Austin and Jericho. You know, you could throw out other names too, whatever the hell else you want to at random. Guys like Goldberg, for example, whatever the hell. If those guys don't, take the offer, if they're presented the chance or the offer to wrestle at WrestleMania 32, then they're morons. They're absolute morons because you're nuts if you wanted to miss out on that opportunity. However, with that said, it's really hard to envision a lot of avenues to utilize a Stone Cold Steve Austin on that show. You know, Triple H and Rock are already tied up, it looks like, so you can't throw either one of them. You know, Taker may very well be taken up with Sting, but then if you, even if you sit there and you say, okay, we'll throw Austin to Taker instead, you know, then it's kind of the similar thing in terms of you're tying up two of the legends, so to speak, when you could be utilizing them better. Sting versus Taker has more dynamics at play. It just works better to me. You know, so I'm sorry. I know a lot of people want to sit there and get on board with this, but I'm not. I just don't think it's the best utilization of Brock Lesnar, which is important. If you're going to bring back Stone Cold Steve Austin for WrestleMania 32, which I think all parties involved ultimately want to do, and they're frankly insane and nuts if they don't want to do, I don't think it's the best utilization of Stone Cold Steve Austin either. For those of you that don't believe that Stone Cold will ever wrestle again, I say you'll find out soon enough just how wrong you were. The timing is right for Austin to come back. The timing is right for him to have one last big money match at WrestleMania, and I expect it to occur, and I ultimately do expect it to occur at WrestleMania 32. Just don't expect me to be incredibly excited about the thought of Stone Cold Steve Austin versus a Brock Lesnar, because at the end of the day, even when you look at the dynamics of the match, how would the match itself even really play out? How would it really work? And you know, you're looking at a Brock Lesnar, I mean, he could legitimately fuck up Austin in the ring, and I'm not even trying to be funny. And for Brock Lesnar to really shine like Brock Lesnar would need to shine, he would need to do some of those things. So is it necessarily best to put him in a situation where you've got him having to take it easy because you're trying to protect Stone Cold? Frankly, the way I look at it at this point, if we're going to go fuck it balls in, I'd rather see something like Brock Lesnar versus Batista at WrestleMania and maybe Stone Cold versus somebody like a Kevin Owens. To me, the dynamics of that would work so much better as opposed to having just Stone Cold versus Brock Lesnar. That's my thoughts on it. I don't think it works as well as many want to think it works, and I don't think it's ultimately a good idea. So when it comes to Austin versus Lesnar at WrestleMania 32, as I said at the beginning, uh, no thanks, I'll pass. But you let me know what you think. If you're excited about the thought of the match, if you want Austin to come back and 
if you do want him to come back but not face Brock Lesnar, who would you like to see him face at WrestleMania 32? And who would you like to see Lesnar face at WrestleMania 32? 